Could AI really be the next big improvement when it comes to outer loans? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Liz, I recall earlier this year when Automotive News was saying this was going to be the year for AI involvement in car loans, and it seems like that day has actually arrived. According to this latest report by Automotive News, the claim is that AI in lending limits bias and speeds up the process. AI involvement helps lenders and dealerships get an accurate, speedy look at an applicant's income. Artificial intelligence is helping reduce bias from dealers and lenders who might otherwise underestimate or overestimate a borrower's income in the auto finance process. Reducing that bias speeds up deals, lowers risk, and matches borrowers with the right type of loans, said Jessica Gonzalez, Director of Auto Lending Strategy and Account Management for Informed IQ. You know, it's funny to me that they refer to it as bias. I don't think of it as bias. I think it more like BS, <laughs> which frequently falls along the lines of deliberate, illegal massaging of the numbers. Yeah. It also cracks me up that they mention the possibility of underestimating income. Show me 100 cases where an F&I officer got the buyer's income wrong, and I'll show you at least 99 of those cases where they overestimated the buyer's income. Right. I've never heard of a finance officer going out to the sales floor saying that they need to show less income for this particular buyer. Never. AI, which is now in much wider use by lenders making upfront credit decisions for car buyers, is a relatively new tool for income verification, Jessica Gonzalez says. The company based in Tiburon, California, works with seven of the top 10 auto lenders, including Ally and Capital One. Jessica says that some lenders, instead of using AI, are still using something that she refers to as stare and compare <laughs> for income documents in the effort to confirm the information dealers submit to them. Jessica Gonzalez says using AI to verify income especially helps car buyers who could be nervous about walking into a dealership such as lower income and thin file consumers that have little credit history. Sure. That kind of nervousness is really escalated because they're walking in not knowing if they're going to get funded or is this deal going to take advantage of me or am I going to pay for a lot of extra things that I don't need to get done, Gonzalez said. Wow, this Jessica isn't just another pretty face. She really knows this business, doesn't she? Well, yes, she acknowledged everything, didn't she? Um, bias, as they keep referring to it as in the F&I process, can result in customers receiving add-on products they didn't want or need, not knowing their true credit score or being charged more than necessary for an interest rate. In all seriousness, estimating a car buyer's income can be challenging, especially when the buyer is a gig worker who might not be including commissions in their total pay. In addition, lenders each have different policies on how to calculate income. Discrepancies can occur if one lender looks at two pay stubs versus three, or if a lender looks at pay stubs from a 60-day time frame versus 30 days. Calculating income using bank statements, especially when data is input incorrectly from the start, creates different outcomes. Gonzalez continues, Whenever you have AI and you see so many different data points, so many different variations of a W-2 pay stub, you become more effective on how to calculate that income with a minimal amount of risk. You open up the opportunity for funding to a market that maybe historically had underrepresented their income. Low income consumers are indeed most at risk for bias or what I refer to as BS number fudging. <laughs> Informed IQ data shows loan borrowers from the low income segment are underrepresented about 43% of the time. Informed IQ has portals where dealers and consumers upload documents and receive real-time feedback on how income is calculated to provide some transparency. This process tells customers which deals and vehicles fit their qualifications, Gonzalez explained. Well, bias or number fudging in calculating income for car buyers can result in troubling situations. If a buyer's income is overrepresented to a lender by just $5,000, that can impact the interest buy rate and terms. Once the income error is discovered, the consumer would no longer qualify for the loan and the dealer might have to take it back. If the customer drove the car off the lot and the dealer can't find another lender to fund that loan, they have to tell the customer to consider another car. And that's when you get a dealer calling you saying, hey, we want the car back. Your loan fell through. Jessica yeah. Gonzalez goes on to say, when you walk out of the dealership, you think the loan's closed. You've done all the good things. You've signed the paperwork. But in reality, that loan is not funded. She adds that F&I managers would have to go and search for another lender to provide this loan. So they're calling all their friends in the credit unions or anywhere they can and saying, hey, what can you do for me? 
Notice she didn't say they are scrambling to cash in a coupon somewhere. <laughs> totally, yeah, she left that out. As car buyers increase demand for transparency, along with the COVID-19 pandemic pushing online car shopping, both things sped up the need for better methods of upfront proof of income. Trusting the technology, understanding its terminology, and ensuring regulatory compliance are still challenges associated with AI. Interestingly, using AI doesn't require much training for F&I staff. The main benefit for lenders who do receive training on how to use the AI tool is easy to understand income data. Lenders judging dealerships on the performance of the loans they deliver isn't always fair because a dealership can't ultimately control their customer's loan payment success. But if a small dealership in a low income zip code with only a few deals each month consistently gives lenders clean deals that, that don't cost a lot of money to onboard, lenders are more apt to do business with them. Some dealers report great success with it. Craig Courtney, finance director for Taylor Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Illinois said, using AI for income verification is timely. It will be a good tool for lenders at a time when they're trying to automate everything as much as possible, he said. If it is accurate and it will help the lenders loss ratios by making sure they're doing a good job of verifying income upfront, that's great. For example, AI verification would confirm reported income when a customer can't immediately show their pay stub. He also pointed out potential challenges. I can also see hiccups if AI is off and didn't calculate properly, and now a person, say with an 800 credit score, is getting stipped for income and gets irritated with us for even asking, he said, referring to add a request for income stipulations. Overall, it will be fine, but it will be an adjustment for the consumer if there's either bias or miscalculation. Again, I'd have to say it's income BS that is happening, not simple bias. The dealer wants to sell the car. It's the finance officer's job to get the buyer a loan. They can be very creative with their methods of doing just that. And many don't hesitate to lie about a buyer's income to get a banker to bite. Hopefully AI can't be manipulated to fudge numbers like the humans involved are so tempted to do. If it can be circumvented or manipulated, no real progress has actually been made. Remember, friends, when it comes to car buying assistance and getting a reasonable car purchase from the Homework Guy team, expect the first call directly from Kevin or me, okay? We will call you to connect you to our folks on the ground in your area. As far as new states and brands go, we are having final conversations today with a better Chevy dealer in Kentucky, and we look forward to announcing that we can help viewers with Chevy car deals there in Kentucky. And for the benefit of any car salesman in our audience, this connection happened because a straight shooting car salesman reached out to Kevin on Facebook and said he'd like to help. We could be working with you too. And Kevin fully expects to onboard another very reputable Chevy dealer in the state of Minnesota in the next few days. Back to the state of Florida, we have an amazing Hyundai dealer who has multiple franchises across the U.S. who is ready to help our viewers and he assures us he'll provide good Hyundai deals in other states too. So let us know if you're a Hyundai fan. And that's a wrap on our show for today, friends. We hope you got great value out of this, and we do very much appreciate your patience as we continue to process hopeful car buyers out there. Hang in there. We'll definitely get to you. We'll continue to connect you anxious buyers out there with better dealers. And as we've said recently, we can now help with used car deals too. For those of you just entering the car market, maybe for the first time in a while, you should be aware of all the free resources we have for you on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. And by the way, if you feel so inclined to show us some love with a small donation today, what we would appreciate most is a donation to the nonprofit we launched to help children. An online option has been set up on Give, Send, Go, and all credit cards and bank cards are currently accepted. The link is appearing on the screen and can be found in the description box below. On our website, thehomeworkguy.com, you'll find a free car buyer's guide there, free email templates for you to use with car dealers. There's also a list of fake fees. It's all there on thehomeworkguy.com, free for you to download to use when car shopping. On our website and on our Facebook page is where we'll announce the launch of a call center that we have mentioned recently. Totally looking forward to that. We're also excited to say that coming this month will be the opportunity for memberships here on YouTube. The memberships will allow for much improved access to both me and Kevin. We do very much enjoy direct contact with our viewers. More coming soon. And watch for our coming book for car buyers with the help of a new staff member, and it will be published first as an ebook. That's right. It will be the best car buyer's manual ever published. And we have the direct involvement of a man who has spent the last decade working directly with dealers and is currently working with multiple dealers and knows their business model inside and out. He knows exactly where the car market is right now with a variety of brands and has powerful tools to help you win on your next car deal. As you can see, we're constantly improving the value of viewers hitting the subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we did here for you today. 
Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guide team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. And if you just recently joined the Homework Guide channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. The Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.